<laughs> I'm not going to dress up in full Halloween costume all the time, but and today we're doing something quick and easy because my day has just been really busy. How about your day? Has your day been crazy busy? Because I suspect it probably has. So today we're going to make something really easy that still brings in the idea of the season which is fall, which is autonomous, which is a great word, and pumpkins and spices and all these different things. And I wanted to make something savory and also something that's going to match up with another video I'm going to do later. Super secret is I'm probably going to record it after we get off of this because we're actually taking a trip up the East Coast and I will be posting some recorded videos instead of live, so it'll be easier for you to watch. So if you haven't told me already, if you didn't come to the one o'clock live, tell me what the weather's like. We have about, what does it say here on the, oh, it doesn't tell me on my watch anymore. Show got me a new watch. Um, it's definitely over 80 degrees. It is hot. We have the air on. We had to close the house which makes me a little bit unhappy. Oh, hey from Australia. I'm glad to see you here. And what's the weather like there? It's supposed to be getting warmer. Is it like super, super hot early the way it's just not going away up here? And Deborah says pumpkin hummus sounds delicious. Um, anyhow, it's sunny and nice and we will probably take Max on an adventure once I'm done filming. Can't say the real word, but I'm just doing the pumpkin hummus that came out of the vegan, um, e the Easy Vegan Cookbook. See, I can't even read. <laughs> it's 80 degrees in Pennsylvania. Hi, Kitty Mama from Columbus. And it's just very simple. And you could make it more complicated if you want to. But sometimes we just need to take a deep breath, have a dip dinner, and just be okay. So with this pumpkin hummus, I'm going to change it a little bit. As we go along, I'm probably going to tweak some of the spices from before because I created this a long time ago. You need a can of pumpkin puree or about a cup and a half. Got sweet potato puree, got butternut squash puree. Those would all work too. I've got a can of already cooked garbanzo beans. If you make your own, I don't know what Cheryl just did because I got on the live, but now Max is looking for her. So sorry about the maxi noise. So anyhow, so it's about, a can is about one and a half cups. So I'm just gonna open this. You can get no salt in your cans and that would be really great. Um, this is not no salt. This is just what was in my pantry. So, um, let's see, I'm going to open it and then I'm going to use my little strainer, my can strainer, and we're going to save the aquafaba over here. And we might even use it because in the recipe, and if I read my recipes again, I don't always do them the same the next way. In fact, Cheryl complains about it all the time. <laughs> she, so I actually said it, when we're pureeing, if you can't, you can use two to three tablespoons of water, but why not just use aquafaba? That's before aquafaba was this cool new thing. Oh, okay, everybody's here now. Hey, Marilyn and Justine, it's 80 degrees in Massachusetts. Hey, Lisa, TS, 80 in South, Southern California. Oh, and Snowy Girl from Australia says, Raining where I live in the snowy mountains, but it's different all over the country. Can't wait for summer. I cannot wait for you to take summer from our cold hands, our really our super sweaty palms. I'm just, we had a couple of days where it was like 65, 70 all day. It was gorgeous. And it getting warm again is just not making me, me super happy. Hey, Apple. Awesome to see you here as always. Sandri is here. 70. It's only 77 in Las Vegas. I feel somehow cheated to be in North Carolina. It's in the 80s. Yeah. And Rachel. Oh, hey, Miss Rachel. I finally got to see her in person. She is that she is such an awesome person. 
you guys should follow her on YouTube. Um, she is not a cooking person, but um, I sent her home with some pumpkin spice syrup, I think, unless her daughters kept it and didn't give it to her. <laughs> and it is, it's all pumpkin and different things. We're going to do some other things. We're going to do some apple things, some date caramel things, I promise you. But pumpkin is just such a great substitute anyhow, like in baking for oil. It it's usually inexpensive and it's just nice. We're actually, can you guys see back there? I got two pie pumpkins and they had, and this was at Target. I'm, I'm not gonna bring the pie pumpkins up, but they had baby Cinderella pumpkins. So the ones that look like the pumpkin in the Cinderella movie, these are delicious. It's actually a French varietal and it was like three bucks. And I would think this will make three to four cans of puree so we're going to do that from scratch in case you can't find it but any kind of winter squash is going to work Ooh, 90 degrees in louisiana okay i feel better now ah uh, rachel did not get the pumpkin syrups so i will make you a special syrup just for you when you come back into town oh awesome reels watching from her walk Marilyn's following along in the Easy Vegan Cookbook. And Rachel loves Cinderella pumpkins. So when you go to Trader Joe's now, or even Target had, you know, those big giant containers of all these fancy pumpkins, most of them are really good eating. So keep an eye out. Also keep an eye out to see if they're buggy. Doesn't mean you can't eat them, but you know. Oh, and CJ says it's cool in Scotland. She's in bed with a couple of cats and a hot water bottle. Again, you make me want to be in the UK. 80 in Boston. Yeah, okay. Okay, okay. I'll quit complaining. So I just drained this off. I'm not like worried if there's any tiny remnant of aquafaba or bean water on there. Oh, I also have to, um, and I'll, while I'm opening hands I'll open this usually this is organic pumpkin if I can find a case and they had cases at Costco when I was there last week I would go ahead and grab a case or two while you can if you have a Kroger's they took away all our Kroger's but it used to be Kroger's was the best about clearancing out seasonal stuff and I got several cases really inexpensive after like Thanksgiving one year. And ooh, that was not, I'm gonna have to wash my hand now. So um, I was trying to be so careful, but that never works, does it? Mmm, pumpkin. And in cans of pumpkin, oftentimes they will have different winter squashes too. So we've got our aquafaba. We've got our main ingredients right here. And then I do have, well, I'm, I'm gonna try and figure out how to use these little ghost sandwich cutters. And I figured we'd make a little sandwich and see how that goes. Oh, Marilyn has that same pumpkin. You can eat the skins of some of the varietals. And it just depends because there's so many, hopefully later this month, if you go and look on my YouTube channel under the Halloween playlist, which this is going to be a part of later on, at the very end, I go to Perkins Orchard and I get a big giant, um, like gar garden basket, garden holder thing, like a cart, garden cart full of different varieties of pumpkins. We'll do that again. Oftentimes, it depends if you know what's been sprayed on them. So a lot of times you want to wash them really carefully. So like even the pie pumpkins on the stems, there's a little bit of mold. So I'm going to put a little bit of um, kind of like a bleach water solution and kind of just dip the stems in there or if I can cut off the stems before I cook them. But I am going to wash the skins really, really well. But it depends really on the thickness of the skin. Just kind of like you can do acorn squash, you can't do butternut squash. Varietals of other winter squash and pumpkins are the same way. Um, oh, Marilyn like watching that trip, and we'll have better sound this time. Okay, so I think this is plenty for my small uh, Vitamix container. 
And sometimes I will use a smaller Ninja or like a little food processor would be great too. I'm just gonna put these in. I'm gonna scrape in all my pumpkin. I try to um, use a whole, cause I did say a whole can, didn't I? No, I said three quarters of a cup. So that's like half a can. Let me get some more back out. I'll make another recipe. So I, I was gonna tell you when you, own, some recipes have just like a cup or three quarters of a cup. That's about right. So that's about to here. Can you guys kind of see that about halfway? And what you can do, if you don't have something else you wanna make with it, like I'm probably gonna use that in a falafel that we will see <laughs> another day. You could put it in ice cube trays, freeze it, and then just pop it out, put it in a bag. Then you can drop a, a, a typical ice cube tray is about two tablespoons, and you could use one or two cubes and drop it in your oatmeal in the morning. Just add some extra stuff, like what do we have here? Potassium is big, and vitamin A is, is pretty good. Well, I guess potassium isn't that big. Um, vitamin A is 40%. So that's something else you can do with it. Hey, Mary Ellen, welcome. So now we're gonna put the things that are gonna make it taste different and like something. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're, and we'll talk about garlic last, I think. Let me get all the garlic options out. Um, we're gonna do about a tablespoon of lemon juice. And I'm going to come back and get that seed. I thought I got all the seeds out, but you never do. Or I never do. Maybe you do. Okay, I'm just going to come in here. See if, oh, there's two seeds. So it's good that I got on my tippy toes to come up here and look. Alrighty. And then I'm going to put a little nutritional yeast in. I think it just adds a really nice mid-tone to this kind of bridges, you know, with the pumpkin really, really well. I'm gonna do again, kind of like we did last night. I find that this stuff goes really well. It's a little smoky. We're gonna use smoked paprika. We're gonna use cumin and coriander again, okay? So we're going to, at least to start with, we're gonna put a teaspoon of cumin in here new cumin. Okay, teaspoon of that. We're going to put, it's at a half teaspoon. I've been really just like really loving coriander, so I'm going to put a tablespoon, uh, a whole teaspoon in. And with smoked paprika, I don't know what I was thinking. I say, let me smell all of this. I'm gonna put a half teaspoon in. We'll start with that. So let me write that down so I can tell you when you ask me what changes I made. Half teaspoon paprika, one teaspoon coriander. And you could put some, some cayenne in there, but because it's for Cheryl, I'm gonna leave it out and sprinkle some on the top of mine. You could also sprinkle on top like some sumac, because that would be delicious. Okay, now let's talk garlic for just a minute. It calls for regular minced garlic and I got a new one at Aldi's. This is just garlic and water and phosphorus acid to keep it. If I didn't want to bother with it, I could use just plain garlic powder. I have two new garlic, well one not so new, one really new garlic powder. So. This is Penzi's roasted garlic, and it just smells delicious. It, it just adds a little depth of flavor, and this is black garlic, so it's, it's ground fermented. So black garlic is always fermented. I'll let you guys see in here. You can't see much, but you can kind of see there. And when you taste it, Besides the lemon burst I just got from the lemon juice being in palm my hand. 
The garlic is milder, almost a little bit sweet, but instead of being like mid, it gets a little bit of a dark tone too. So I think I'm gonna play around with these. Originally, we were gonna put in two cloves of garlic sliced, but I think I am going to put in a half a teaspoon of this fermented black garlic, and I'm gonna do half a teaspoon of roasted garlic. And I'm gonna smell to make sure that they're gonna play nice. Yeah, they're gonna play great. And you could add salt or not. You could add a salt so substitute. So I'm gonna do roasted garlic powder and black garlic powder, or both at a half. So we'll start at this, then we'll kind of taste everything and see where we wanna go. So I have some lemon juice in here. So I am going to attempt to actually see if it'll go on its own. I have this guy here. Let's see if it'll just go on its own at all. Okay. And um, Debbie was saying, let me come back over here. I'll leave this up while it's getting loud and I'm not talking. Okay. So I could try and force it if I want it to be really, really thick, or I could just go, hello, here's a tablespoon of aquafaba, which I'll, I'll add one. Then we'll also put in the tamper and see if that helps a little bit. But sometimes it will come together that first time, so I just have to do it. Okay. It just needs more liquid. And sometimes it just depends on how dry your ingredients are. If you made your own pumpkin puree, it's probably going to be wetter than the one from the can. And that's okay. You can also cook your pumpkin and strain it a little bit, maybe like for a few hours. Let's try that. Let's see how that does. And a food processor would just make quick work of it, but I just didn't want to bring it over here. Take a look at it, and then a lot of times what, what I'll do, I'll let you guys see it from the top too. Okay. I clicked you, I heard it click. Oh, sorry, it's the bottom is broken. So I'm gonna taste this, see if there's anything else I need to adjust. Add, um, what I did not put in, that is in the recipe here. I'm pretty sure, oh, oh actually, this one doesn't have tahini. If you're making a hummus recipe and you don't want to use sesame butter because you're not doing seeds or nuts, or you're allergic, just make sure you add another little bit of liquid. Mmm. Still need something. Actually, you know what I'm going to, you may already know what I'm going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And I think it, I think I am going to put in just a little bit of cayenne pepper. And I might do a little bit of mushroom powder. Okay, so what I'm tasting I can taste a little bit of the higher note from the lemon juice, and I taste kind of these mid, 
cumin. The cumin doesn't seem dark or it feels like it's missing a whole range of everything. So that's what I'm looking to, to do. Oh, I'm looking forward to the day that defatted sesame powder is available like that pink PB powder. You should write the PB people because they might do it. They do a cashew powder. A sesame powder R2 Joy, J-O-I, that does the milks because they could do like a sesame milk. So that could be good. Um, and there's nothing wrong. If you're just not wanting to get tahini because it has added, some of it has added oil, not all of it, you could put sesame seeds and make your own tahini in the Vitamix. Okay. So this is my ancho and guajillo so if you look down below the recipe it links you to is one that's an ancho chili hummus dip and so i think i think i want to put a half teaspoon of that in there and so this is like an ancho guajillo mix could be whatever you want it to be whatever single it could be new mexican chilies i also think it needs a half a teaspoon of regular garlic powder. And I think it needs some onion powder too, which I did not even, woo, did not even bring over here. So let's do like a quarter teaspoon of onion powder in there. And let me see if that will balance it out the way I want it to balance out. And just we'll wait on the mushroom powder because I'm just not sure it's a perfect fit. Also, I think I'm going to add two more tablespoons of nutritional yeast. And I didn't put any salt in there, and we'll put a pinch, just a like this. This cayenne is pretty hot, so I'm probably putting in like 1 32nd of a teaspoon. So let me put in what else I did. Garlic, that, onion powder. Okay. And then if that doesn't work, I think I might go the nutrition, um, to go balsamic. I think that could possibly add a flavor that I'm looking for. And Karen says, Joy has hemp, so why not? <gasps> oh, Apple says, I did a quick search and it does exist. Interesting. I'll have to look that up too. If you find it, please send me the link. because everything didn't blend in quite the way I want it to. So I'm going to, just going to scrape everything real good and let it blend a little more. I know, is an apple? Apple is a great detective, Justine. I love the way you just go, hey, I wonder if X exists. And then somebody's like, oh, I know where it exists. Oh, this smells nice. I do see if see a few pieces of black garlic that pretty much didn't get sucked down into the mix. So I'm going to add a couple more tablespoons. Well, let's do one more tablespoon of aquafaba. Aquafaba is a little thicker than water, so it's not going to thin out quite as much as the goal. But let's see what happens. everybody. Oh, hey, Sandra. Yes, I am being my mad scientist at work. 
Um, whenever I make a recipe that I made a while ago, I'm always tweaking it because you learn new flavors and combinations. Yeah. This tastes better to me. And I probably will go ahead and add a little bit of salt to it as well. Not a lot. You could, instead of a salt substitute, you maybe could put a little bit of celery seed, ground celery seed in there. And I think this probably added enough onion garlic as it is. So I'll let you guys see what it looks like. So it's like nice and fluffy, right? It's not stodgy, it's still fluffy, but it's still thick enough to hold on. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I thought what we would do, because I don't know how to, I got this um, ghost sandwich maker for kids and I don't have kids. And I didn't grow up using them, so we're going to see how to use them, and we're going to make a ghosty sandwich, which, why not? That is sort of Halloween-y, so I'm, I'm there for it. So, and if you guys know how these things work, you can tell me. Okay, so it came in a little kit with like, this punches out ghosts, and it's got little, little bat. Um, things for cocktails or sandwiches to hold it together. So the way it is, is this is like the cookie, and you could use the, this part as a cookie cutter, but it's a sandwich cutter. And then this comes along and helps you seal it, I, I suppose. So I've never used it before. So we're gonna try that and we'll make ourselves just a little hummus sandwich, I'm thinking Taking the ghost over here. Yeah, that'll, that should get rid of pretty much all the crust action. And also, this is flourless sprouted bread, so it's very similar to Ezekiel bread. I got at Aldi's that's vegan. So if you're looking for a little bit budget friendly <laughs> bread, you could do that. Oh, hey, Joanne. I was, I'm here, but in, on, in body only. I've been packing to move to Georgia. I've been meaning to message you, but I, I didn't know if you were gone already. We've been living here since 2017. I really didn't think about moving again. Way too much stuff. I know that I'm just excited to have you just that much closer to me. It's still not close enough, so I've cut this out. We have our little sandwich things. And I'm thinking then once I get the filling in, I press this and this should seal the outsides of the sandwich. But I don't know what I'm doing. So those of you with grandkids or kids, you should be helping me out now. <laughs> Ooh, Costco has a large container of organic peanut butter powder. That's cool. So I'm thinking if this was, if I had grandchildren, this would be a fun way. And you could also do, you know, PB&J. These were not very expensive. I think I got them at Marshall's. I'm not gonna love that I'm losing surface area, which makes me feel weird. I'm one of those everything should come to the edge people. Cheryl is not though, so she's probably gonna be like, this is the best sandwich you've ever made, me. Plus it's a ghost, right? And you could layer in some other stuff, but until I realize if I've totally messed up, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm assuming that you put this in here. And does you, no, I'm just gonna do it this way. I'm gonna put this on here and you go down. And then is it gonna look like those PB&J sandwiches kind of? <gasps> It kind of does. So you could cut the, the edges, which aren't really edges off. So there it is. We could have made little eyes in there, but I say let's just give it a little barrette. And there's our ghosty sandwich. And in fact, <laughs> we are, um, on our trip, we're gonna be bringing a lot of food 
and Cheryl wants us to do chickpea salad. So it, it would be really cute to have little ghosty sandwiches all ready to go in our cooler. That's going to be easy to kind of pass up the the snack food of our past because road trips is usually been in the past when we do the worst. So we're going to make sure that we have all the snacky things that we want to have coming up. Oh yeah, the ghost shape could be a tulip. Look, it's a tulip. It's a ghost. I like that. Or a bell. Yeah, it is kind of like a bell in Christmas. It would have been better if I made eyes. I think it needed, I think it needs eyes. And this is too big. I could like cut out a center so you could see the stuff. This is just a little ghost too. I'll show you. Like, but I don't think, you know, so like you could have a ghost in the middle of your sandwich or, but it's too big to be two ghost eyes or anything. I could have gone through and just just cut out a little bit, like probably just even stuck this in and gone around like that. The Ezekiel bread likes to come back and fill its places, but we could go in and get an eye going, something like that, a little hole, or get another little something to press out. So we're going to have eyes on the next one that we do. Yeah, a wide straw for eyes, that's great. And actually, you know what? I'll make a second one. Let's try it out. This is gonna be part of our dinner tonight. Okay, so let's get rid of these guys so you don't have to see all that. All right, so first I'm taking this. How did I get? There we go. I think that's it. And you could toast the bread before or after, after you cut it off. So we've got these two little ghosty pieces. Oh yeah, a little cut fruit. So you could cut ghost fruit to go with it. That's a great idea. Yep, and TS is saying the same thing. All right, so I've got a straw. Do I have a straw I really want to? Yeah, I can poke through the straw. Okay, I kind of think this one looks nicer, so we'll put him on top. And I'm thinking an eye here. <laughs> Pop that guy out. Okay, let's do another, let's see if I can get, I've got to get it a little closer where I can see, so hopefully he's not cockeyed. Though if he wants to be, he can be. Okay, and I wonder if I have a bigger, have a bigger straw than that, that I could do, yeah, I think, I'm thinking of doing a mouth, I'm trying to look to see if I have anything that would cut out a good mouth, but I think this is too big, yeah, the, that's too big. That's the same size. Okay, I need to I need to stop with the perfectionistic ghost. So it kind of has a mouth there. I'm just gonna see if I can get a little a little mouth too. He's a Pac-Man ghost. He is a Pac-Man ghost, isn't he? Okay, so now let's get some more of our pumpkin hummus, and we'll spread on him. And these would be really cute to have for like a kid's party or a grown-up's party. And it's one way that you can have some stuff on Halloween that's not all full of sugar. Like we can, I'm still big on give them something yummy and sweet treat, but just a little healthier. But that's, you know, up to you in the medical situation, obviously. Okay, and now we should be able to see a little bit of that through here. Let's get, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm digging that. So then we take this in, 
and we're coming through to make sure nobody leaks anything out. It makes it like a tartlet. And you could actually use this with pie crust or something like that to make little pop tarts and then just trim away some of this edge. But I'm leaving them. He does have one eye bulging out. I don't know if you can see that. But I thought these were just so cute. They weren't very expensive. And that's my Halloween spin on on our pumpkin hummus. And pumpkin hummus is good for any time of the year. And if you don't have pumpkin, just cook a sweet potato, puree it up. Like really chunks of cooked sweet potato, toss it in here with all this other stuff and that would work really great too. Um, yeah, a cookie cutter and a sandwich sealer. So it's very interesting to me. I've never had a sandwich sealer before, so you guys got to witness my first time. That's why I'm a little, and also because this is a very seedy bread, it has some, some kind of rough edges there. But I think this would be really cute. And what would be really cute in this too would be, you know, if you did like a peanut butter and jelly for a little kid and you could have, you know, make sure you've got the eyes a different color than the mouth or you could get super detailed with it if you wanted to. Um, and Kelly says, I'm glad we don't get any trick-or-treaters. I don't buy any candy. We used to have a multi-course sit-down gothic dinner party. And I think if you go to, I think it's on, don't know which site it's on, healthyslowcooking.com or plantbasedinstantpot.com, but the one that has um, a one-pot pasta recipe, I show you some of the pictures from one of them. I think it's super cute. And if you don't want to like, if you don't have a straw, then you have these little toothpicks that work just fine. If you have more little things, like I actually have so many teeny tiny Halloween cut, cut out things and I've made crackers and cut out crackers with these things and poked eyes with toothpicks in them because I'm a crazy person. Um, oh, hey Angela, it's awesome to see you here as always. Yes, and Tia says the extra parts like this stuff, there are a couple things you can do with it. But TS is saying you could um, dry them out and put them out for the birds, absolutely. Um, if it's expensive bread, so like if it's Ezekiel bread, which can run expensive, or Dave's, which I think still has an oil-free one, or you have to have gluten-free bread, which just costs a bazillion dollars. Um, and because Thanksgiving is coming up, you could also just kind of cut it up, dehydrate it a little bit, or toast it, throw it in, and then keep doing that with also with the heels of the bread if you don't eat the heels of the bread, and then you will have magically some stuffing without paying $6 for a jar of somebody else's dried out bread. Dry out your own bread, right? So that works really well. Uh, Kathy and <laughs> Joanne says, Kathy, what don't you have for Halloween? Not much, but I always seem to manage to buy some more things. Like I just got that. Um, but no, I have sets of Halloween dinnerware, which is just kind of crazy. And I'm not sure what's going on where all the, all the blinks are coming. Here we go. I'll turn that off and we'll be good. So I have lots of Halloween stuff. This today's a little short, a couple of, and tomorrow at one o'clock, Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be on Chef AJ's YouTube show, and we are going to make ancho pumpkin queso. We are going to make spooky potato soup that's green from greens, and you can get kids to eat it. And then we're going to make a pumpkin shake with no ice cream. So you've seen me make a strawberry ice creamless shake. We're just going to make it with pumpkin. In on HealthySlowCooking.com, I have that recipe with pecans, but I want to make it with oats this time and make it a pumpkin spice oat shake for those of you, including myself, who are avoiding nuts at the moment. So that should also be really good for kids because that'll take out nut allergies if you're having people over. Uh, let's see. 
Apple says I have a bit of uh, leftover chili from yesterday and I'm gonna turn it into burgers for dinner tonight. Oh, that's gonna be so good. Are you gonna put like some flaxseed and some oats or do you have a different plan? We wanna know. And Kathy Bartle says my uh, family eats the heels so they accumulate, oh, rare, my family rarely eats the heels. Cheryl never will. So they accumulate in the freezer, then I dry a bit in the oven and blend into breadcrumbs that I keep them in the freezer for casserole toppings. That's a great idea. And it's expensive to buy breadcrumbs, especially gluten-free breadcrumbs. And Debbie says she'd love a Halloween show and tell. Well, maybe when we get closer to Halloween, maybe I'll have a longer show and show you some of the stuff, some of the dinnerware and things like that if you're really interested. Um, we have to, you know how some people have bins of Christmas stuff? We have bins of Halloween stuff, like bins and bins and bins of Halloween stuff. So we won't show you all of it, I promise, but a few of it. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. That's what we had. We had the sweet potato black bean chili for um, dinner last night. And if you can get the recipe, it's live on the channel. It probably is linked somewhere on the side even. Yay, oats, I know, Joanne. And Joanne, I have totally been missing seeing you. So I'm so glad that you're here today. Um, you do not want to see all the Halloween things at the Hester Purser household, because that would be a really long live, I think. But maybe Cheryl can show off some of her stuff. Cause she did a lot of the, the, she does most of the house decorating when we've had parties and I do the cooking. Um, and Apple says, yeah, adding flaxseed and oats. Oh, Marilyn loves my Halloween cookbook. Thank you so much. If you're looking for it and you're on YouTube, it's probably right down there. It's not very expensive and it's, it's a lot of fun. I enjoyed making it. Um, also, I should have more, more information on upcoming books soon or at least a page where you can go and enter in your email address to find out when the book the ebook's coming out so keep an eye out for that oh and sandra wants to see my halloween decorations that's awesome um hi delia, delia. sorry i think i'm tired i think i was going to make more things and i'm I'm not sure if I'm going to now. I think I just want to go to bed. <laughs> I'm doing a lot of lives this month. So, and again, or a lot of videos. So I said, I'm going to go live mostly every day. So keep an eye out. I'm trying to put up things the day before. Next week could be a little, we might go live there. Could We could be somewhere super fun. If we are, I'm going to go live there. If not, I'm hopefully gonna have a video that we can back it up in. Tomorrow, one o'clock, Chef AJ, big Halloween show. I haven't decided if I'm doing another live tomorrow. I think that's enough lives probably. So I'll just point everybody over there. Then Thursday at one, Lisa Rice is gonna come on and we're gonna actually do um, more of a weekly show for a while. We're gonna miss next week. Next week is going to be different than all the other weeks. And then Friday, Thursday night, I'm planning on making something live for you. Friday, I'm going to make something live. And Saturday, I'm going to make a drink for sure. And then I have class. If you're in Kathy's Cooking Club, class is going to be at 1 o'clock on Saturday, Eastern Standard Time. I know October is my favorite month, and I don't know why I don't ever plan all the things in advance, and I just do the things. Debbie says, rest, take care of me. See, if I do two lives, see, you can hear my voice starting to go. My voice just starts to go, is all. Oh, and Raven says, I want to see any Halloween kitchen items. I also make voodoo doll gingerbread at Yule and Christmas. Ooh, I want to get on that list. Um, <laughs> Justine says, we love you, but you're no good to us if you lose your voice. Don't forget to take care of you. Well, I will do, and I'm going to go for now, but it's been lovely to share a little bit of my Halloween enthusiasm with you guys. And, and I also just want you to see, it can be just the little things. It really can be a ghost cutout. And you know what else? 
coffin cutouts you can do with your own knife or a gravestone, right? Those are all things you don't even need any fancy cookie cutters or anything for. And just, if you're a Christmas person, I hope you're doing all the Christmassy things right now in October. If you're a Thanksgiving-y person, just enjoy, enjoy that right now because just let yourself really just enjoy the season you want. Eat the flavors you like. You hate pumpkin spice? Don't have it. You know, maybe it's cinnamon brown sugar that's your thing right now. What are you feeling? If you're in Australia, you might be like, it's berry season. <laughs> you know, I'm ready for lemon blueberry stuff. And so just wherever you are in the world and what's coming up, just enjoy it to the max and just really give yourself some grace and space to take care of yourself. And I'm doing my best to take good care of myself too. And you guys are so supportive. So don't forget to take care of you. Um, oh good, and hopefully some of these recipes may get done when we take the car trip because I'll work in the car some, but I'm not making any promises of when they're coming up. Um, oh, and Lisa says, as I only have one living family member left, I don't really celebrate, decorate for the holidays. And watching you enjoy Halloween is me living vicariously through you. Thank you. And you're so welcome. And even if it's just you and you make your, like, this is gonna come up soon. I did get some Halloween pasta while I was at Aldi's today getting some other things. And these are natural food colors. There's no artificial flavor, or there's no artificial colors. It's like black carrot and stuff. Are they not the cutest? So even if it's just you and you eat pasta, maybe do that. Or buy one of your favorite holiday candles and just have it on the coffee table, just so you know it's special just for you. Or if fall is your thing, make sure you're taking a walk and looking at all the leaves change. They're just barely starting here, but since we're driving up the East Coast, we should be get to where they are and, and possibly even drive home and see them all the way home, which would be delightful. So be good to yourself. Snuggle up in a a blanket in the air conditioning if you have to and I will talk to you guys tomorrow be sure to come hang out with me at Chef AJ and Lisa Rice on Thursday at 1 okay I'll